Pastor Todd defiling the house of God, misinterpreting scripture. Let's jump into it. We are in a world where spiritual leaders hold a sacred responsibility to guide, to teach, and to shepherd their flocks. The weight of accountability and consequences for these teachers will be uncovered. In the video that I'm about to show you, Pastor Todd starts off by giving a demonstration within a church service with a setting of faith, friends, and spiritual formation. These were his topics. He starts off in his demonstration by saying, this is the house of God. This is his temple. Then he says, I'm going to demonstrate how we be acting with our bodies in the house of God. From there, he grabs food and splashes it all over the wall. He picks up a plate of Chinese food, ketchup, a bag of chips, pan of noodles, rice, and throws it up against the wall. But here's the kicker. He then takes a bottle of syrup and pours it all over the floor. Worst part of it all, he takes that same bottle of syrup and pours it all over the holy Bible. From there, he picks up a Subway sandwich and a pack of eggs. He throws this dozen of eggs against the wall. This wall is symbolizing the temple of God. He gets a box of pizza, starts throwing slices of pizza at this demonstration of the temple of God. He then opens up a bottle of juice and pours the juice all over the floor at this temple of God. Then he calls people out of the audience and tells them to stand next to him in the mess. And he finalizes this demonstration by asking the people to stand with him in this mess and relates it to what we ask God to stand with us in our bodies and says that while our bodies are a mess, how can we present our bodies as living sacrifices unto God for our body is a temple? Let's watch the video together and I'm going to show you how this pastor has completely misrepresented the scripture. Dishonored God, dishonored the house of God, had a lack of reverence for God's word and portrayed an inappropriate message displayed by inappropriate behavior, which is supposed to be in the presence of God. Now, Old Testament scripture sets standards for priests and those who are called to serve in the house of God. So here's the video. And then after the video, I'm going to break this down, starting from Old Testament and taking us through to New Testament. Here you go. So, so this is a temple, okay? I'm, I'm just gonna start acting how we be acting with our bodies in the house. My favorite is Chinese food and ketchup. Why are you so bothered? Who gonna clean it? Yeah, this is just the house of God. It's just a house. It's just a house. Just a house. Who cares? <laughs> I lift my hands in the sanctuary. I lift my hands to give you the glory. I lift my hands to give praise, and we will praise you. Don't care so much. It's just a temple. Syrup all over the communion. Don't care so much. Over the Bible, too. Y'all, stop acting like you care about this. Let me make... Stop acting like this matters to you. It's just a temple. Stop acting bothered. You don't care. You don't care. We don't care about this. Ugh. 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 What'd you say? We get it. No, you don't. It's been 40 years. 
It's been 50 years. It's been 15 years of not caring about our temple. Why do you care about these eight chairs and these symbols of Christianity when it's not even the place where the Holy Spirit is dwelling? I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. While it is true that believers are temples of the Holy Spirit and that God dwells within them, it is equally important to understand the scriptural teachings regarding reverence for God's house. This is talked about in both Old and New Testament. The psalmist David says in 84 verse 1 through 4, How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns and faints for the courts of the Lord. Although our bodies are God's temple, the sanctuary is God's house, his dwelling place. God has destroyed man and scripture proves this for dishonoring his house. Leviticus 10 verse one through three, it recounts the story of Nadab and Abihu. These were the sons of Aaron, Levites, Levitical priests, and they offered unauthorized fire unto God. And the Bible says God consumed them with fire. This event in Leviticus 10, verse 1 through 3, it highlights the seriousness of honoring God's commands and his house in accordance to his instructions on how you are to behave and act in the sanctuary. God gives detailed instructions in the book of Leviticus, starting out actually in the book of Exodus, where he tells Moses and gives Moses the instructions on how the priesthood, the Levitical order are to conduct themselves in the presence of God. Not only do we see this with Aaron's sons in Leviticus, we also see this in Malachi 2 verse 7, where it speaks of the role of priests as messengers of the Lord and emphasizes the need for them to uphold righteousness, speak the truth, and teach God's ways to the people. And then we look at Moses. Because Moses dishonored God and misrepresented God through his disobedience, when God specifically instructed Moses to speak to the rock, out of Moses' frustration, he struck the rock. Moses, in doing this, misrepresented God's character and his authority. His actions didn't reflect God's word. It reflected his interpretation through his own selfish frustration and impatience with God's children. Moses' actions did not reflect the reverence and the obedience that God expects from his servants. Like Moses, preachers and leaders of the church are called to obey God's guidance. Preachers are to reflect the character of God in their words by the word of God. And they are to conduct themselves with humility and reverence obedience as well in the presence of God's people. Let's keep watching. But I love pizza and egg rolls. A couple sausages. Somebody said, let me get a slice. <laughs> You've had plenty. <laughs> It's healthy. We get it. Now I need eight volunteers to come sit in this. Come on. Yeah, I need eight volunteers to go sit in that mess. Yet every single day, we make the Holy Spirit inhabit a place that we do not care about making sure it's clean. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 40 emphasizes that everything should be done in a fitting and orderly way in the church. This demonstration contradicts biblical principles with regard to our bodies being temples of the Holy Spirit. Now meet me over for part two.